morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Source, and here is your detailed weather forecast update for Tuesday, the 11th of December 2025. Thursday, sorry, it's a detail packed one today. Severe thunderstorms are popping up onto the radar, particularly in southeast Queensland. Let's talk about those ones right now. You can see last night we did have a lot of that cloud coverage that's remained into this morning, and that's really lingering across this border ranges and parts of south central Queensland out to Gundawindi. In fact, a little bit further inland out to about St. George. This will throttle back a little bit of the thunderstorm potential in these locations here later this afternoon and this evening. It wasn't expected to get anything too crazy here later today, but Warwick was still looking at a thunderstorm, and I'll touch on that in just a second. For the most part, though, this afternoon and this evening, the big-time stuff is expected to be over the border and towards New South Wales, with some potential uh, high-end thunderstorms towards the west and the southwest of Coffs Harbour. I'll talk about those in just a few minutes. But in terms of the risk for this afternoon and this evening through southeastern Queensland, we are going to be looking at a couple of thunderstorms later today into tonight uh, around the Warwick area and around those border range communities uh, towards the west of Warwick out towards Gondawindi and a couple of thunderstorms are also possible in our usual locations out in towards central Queensland here towards the west of Roma and in June around Augathella, Charleville, Wyandra, Tambo and then inland to Quilpe and Adavale. The bulk of the thunderstorm activity though is as you can tell, uh, as you can tell over the border in towards New South Wales all fueled by moisture that's going to be pouring in from the Pacific Ocean and that's going to be promoting high end severe thunderstorm development in a few locations most specifically along a line stretching from White Cliffs and Wilcannia into the extreme northwestern corner of New South Wales through Cobart down to Dubbo and Orange just outside of Sydney and a couple of higher end severe thunderstorms with large hailstones and damaging to locally destructive wind gusts are also possible towards the west of Coffs Harbour as already discussed. Now later this afternoon and this evening we're expecting these thunderstorms to undergo some upscaling. What that means is our usual pulse thunderstorm cells which are isolated and sporadic in nature as they move off no more normally and in this case here all lines basically and you've got damaging winds on the leading edge of those squall lines, heavy rainfall embedded within the squall, and lots and lots of lightning, particularly early on into the evening hours. And that's going to happen through parts of central New South Wales or central northern New South Wales before these thunderstorms continue to track up towards Warwick and Toowoomba. And you can see a big long line out here is expected to upscale, uh, impacting Thallon, St. George, Cunnamulla, Wyandra, and then up towards Charleville and Roma to about 1 or 2 o'clock early tomorrow morning. A couple of thunderstorms are also possible, as mentioned, around Warwick and Toowoomba, particularly towards the west of Warwick. These could be quite lightning dense as well out around the Gundawindi area and towards the west of Stanthorpe as well but the main squall line activity is going to be out here into this part of rural Queensland here along the border between New South Wales and Queensland outside and particularly towards the west of Thallon and St George so very very far inland but a lot of lightning is possible into these lines out here and in fact if we have a look at our lightning map here and see how dense some of our lightning activity is forecast to be very very dense in a few spots keep in mind this is at 10 o'clock at night so it's going to be keeping a few people awake out here but there is a lot of lightning forecast in this line. It's going to be quite an impressive sight. Making it up to Charleville and basically getting up to Roma, but not quite making it by around midnight and then dying off as we get into the early hours of tomorrow morning. Now, we are expecting tomorrow to start off relatively clear. We're not expecting too much in the way of high cloud coverage through southeast Queensland tomorrow uh, morning. And that should set itself up for a decent or a half decent storm day along those border ranges and scenic rim communities. We could be talking about some not high end storm activity, but definitely some moderate uh, to higher end storm activity through these parts of southeastern Queensland. Let's start off with a look at convective available potential energy. That builds up quite quickly on a Friday. There is a little bit of convective available potential energy available for these thunderstorms onto those border ranges. Keep in mind this isn't exactly a grand uh, or a grand slam on these convective available potential energy values, but they are there. They are a lot better further inland though and some higher end severe thunderstorm activity is most certainly going to be possible on Friday towards west of St. George, Thallon and then down towards Lightning Ridge and we'll get. There will still be a few thunderstorms though, particularly along those border range communities. We will be talking about a bit of isolated thunderstorm activity. The mode of the thunderstorms that I'm going to be looking out for tomorrow afternoon and evening is going to be high precipitation storm modes. If we get a convective sounding here, you can see there's really bugger all steering into the low level jet here, which means that these thunderstorms are going to be very slow moving. When we see these sort of winds here, which are variable into the 700 to 500 millibar range and blowing out of every single direction and are also very, very weak, it means that these thunderstorms are going to be moving very slow slowly, very sporadically, and to be honest, quite randomly. And that means that we've got the potential for heavy rainfall developing as a result from these thunderstorms. Now, this is going to be more of a problem over the border in towards the northeast of New South Wales, particularly around Urbanville down to Inverell and Grafton. We'll be seeing a couple of higher precipitation storm modes down here. In fact, a few thunderstorms that do go severe warned for heavy rainfall, locally intense rainfall potentially in a few spots, but we will still see a couple of those higher precipitation storm modes into the scenic room and parts of the border ranges. But it's doubtful 
as to whether or not they'll make them into the bigger communities of Toowoomba and Warwick, and it's highly unlikely that Brisbane or the Gold Coast is going to see anything as a result of these thunderstorms. But I will keep watching, and as you as you can see as we play this forward here, those winds do start to swing out of the south a little bit more, particularly into the lower levels, and that may pull a couple of thunderstorms over in towards southeastern Queensland later tomorrow night into uh, early Saturday morning. So this is still another feature that I want to be watching quite closely. Friday could be a bit of a wild card day for some severe thunderstorm activity, but it's going to be very much concentrated along the New South Wales and Queensland border. Warwick may pick up something. There will be some more lightning active thunderstorms and squall lines further out in towards south central Queensland and north of Gundawindi and up towards Chinchilla and Roma. It could not quite make it towards Roma though uh, tomorrow afternoon and evening, but definitely some wild card severe thunderstorm activity on the heavy rainfall threat could be possible in this part of Queensland as we get out towards tomorrow afternoon and evening. Now Saturday is expected to be to be a bit more of a drier and calmer day. We kind of catch our breath once again on Saturday. There's no instability in the environment and a couple of severe thunderstorms are possible in Queensland, but they will be well out in towards the west. And you can see Saturday is expected to be kind of a nothing burger across southeastern Queensland. Sunday is where the forecast becomes a little bit more interesting once again. It does look like high cloud coverage may be a bit of a problem with a bit of jet stream cloud streaming through in towards southeastern Queensland on Sunday morning, which may throttle back a little bit of thunderstorm potential. And we also don't have the best setup on Sunday, all things can considered for severe thunderstorms. There is going to be some very high convective available potential energy values getting up to about 3,000 in one or two spots, and that may get some big thunderstorms off the ground out here and towards Roma and Chinchilla, and maybe one or two big thunderstorms as well along that dry line, which is going to be situated very far inland. But there are a few things that are going to work against thunderstorms in southeastern Queensland, particularly into the Brisbane and the Gold Coast area. One of those is that dry line. November 1st is a bit of an example. We had a massive thunderstorm outbreak hyped up through Brisbane and the Gold Coast, and while some big time thunderstorms did track through eventually, they didn't uh, kind of match the expectations. We had some massive thunderstorms further inland, but because that dry line was situated so far, this is November 1st of this year, where we had nine centimeter hailstones outside of Warwick in a place called Clifton. And it's a similar setup. We've got a dry line very, very far inland, but that's kind of where the similarities end. We've still got a very humid environment, but if we have a look at wind shear values around the Toowoomba and the Warwick area, where we're going to use between 35 to 45 knots is what we're looking at. Now that can work for supercell thunderstorms and high end thunderstorms development, but it's not as healthy as what we would typically like to be seeing in a slam dunk thunderstorm forecast, and it doesn't look like Sunday's time. If we do see strong thunderstorms getting themselves going, though, it is going to be around the Warwick and the Toowoomba area. We could be talking about some potentially severe thunderstorm activity into parts of the Granite Belt and the Darling Downs in this area here. We may also see some thunderstorm activity developing into the Brisbane City area and potentially some strong severe thunderstorm activity into the northeast of New South Wales, as well as our typical severe thunderstorm activity out in towards central and central western Queensland. This will also be another place to watch for potential high-end severe thunderstorm development. But Sunday, still a few cogs in the old machine that we need to be looking at, uh, greasing over over the next couple of days to really see what is going to pop off on Sunday. It could result in some strong thunderstorms, but it may also result in some absolute dud days to really see what does eventuate. I'll have some details over on the Facebook page, though, later this afternoon and this evening. Monday will produce some high precipitation storm modes. We've got some extreme convective available potential energy values that are going to set themselves up across southeastern Queensland and then severe thunderstorm development. When we start to see numbers here well into the 2000s, up to about 3000 in a few spots, that can produce some absolute cracker severe thunderstorm activity. But remember, Cape or convective available potential energy is not everything in a thunderstorm forecast. Once again, dry line situated quite far inland, particularly into the early morning hours. Likely to be a lot of cloud coverage as well left over from Sunday's storm outbreak, uh, particularly into the early morning hours through southeast Queensland, which will hold things back a little bit, uh, particularly earlier on. And uh, uh, as you can see, whilst we still do see thunderstorms getting themselves off the ground quite well through southeastern Queensland, particularly around the Toowoomba and the Warwick area. If we have a look at bulk wind shear values as well, very, very low. In fact, even worse than what we're going to be talking about on Sunday, 15 to 20 knots is just not going to be enough to get these severe thunderstorms organized like supercell thunderstorms uh, would. So really not healthy stuff that we're going to be looking at here on Monday for severe thunderstorm development. But we will still be talking about some slow moving high precipitation storm modes in this black outline here. Definitely could be seeing some significant rainfall accumulations as a result. These thunderstorms can be very slow moving and probably more of a February or March type thunderstorm uh, in nature, potentially even more of a far north Queensland type thunderstorm in nature as well for heavy rainfall. They could also throw down some pretty significant light, uh, lightning as well. So Monday is still a day that I want to be watching quite closely. Severe thunderstorm activity expected to be quite widespread further north in towards the central regions of Queensland, particularly around Emerald and then inland out towards Longridge. And your outback variety of thunderstorms with lots of lightning and damaging wind gusts is forecast in towards northern central Queensland as well. 
well. Another feature that we should be keeping close tabs on too, especially this time of the year. Uh, Tuesday does raise a few more questions. We do have a bit of a feature now uh, popping up onto the forecast models, particularly Tuesday evening, which is this southeasterly flow that's going to sweep through southeastern Queensland. And if we think back to Monday, that does kind of match up the thunderstorm forecast. It looks like we are going to be seeing kind of a bit of a precursor to some heavy rainfall developing through the southeast Queensland coastline. I still don't know exactly what to make of this forecast right now, considering that there has been some chopping and changing of the forecast models. But I would just like to say now on Tuesday, especially Tuesday evening into uh, Wednesday morning, heads up, there is some heavy rainfall coming through, particularly for locations north of Lismore into the northeast of New South Wales, and potentially as far north as Rockhampton. We may be seeing some isolated rainfall accumulations up to 125 millimetres through parts of the southeast Queensland coastline, particularly if this rainfall does get itself jammed up into the Gold Coast hinterland around the Springbrook National Park. Rainfall accumulations could be approaching 200 millimetres in one or two locations. But again, a feature that I will keep close tabs on this rainfall is not something that's cause for concern right now, but it is still something that's fired up on the radar and something that we will need to be tracking quite closely in the next couple of days. Uh, all of this moisture will also cause a severe thunderstorm outbreak if it does get itself going in towards central Queensland. So we could be talking out towards the west of Roma, out to Charleville and Orcathella, and then north to Longreach, Huendon and Charters Towers. We could be talking about some pretty significant severe thunderstorm activity out here. Another feature that I will be keeping close tabs on. But in terms of the rainfall accumulations, it's still way too early to be putting a number on exactly what we're expecting right now. Some of the forecast models are going pretty ham with some of these numbers here, particularly around Noosa, 110 millimetres here on the forecast models, and a few higher accumulations around Beerwa up to about 130 millimetres towards the north of Caboolture. So another feature that I will keep close tabs on, but right now it's still too much of an uncertain picture to really be calling the shots on what we are going to be expecting right now, rainfall-wise. Just know that if this southeasterly flow does kick itself up, there will be some significant rainfall accumulations worth mentioning. Up and towards northern Australia, we are beginning to see a significant uptick in rainfall, particularly in the next week or so. There's expected to be a lot of shower and thunderstorm activity through parts of the Kimberley region and by extension into the Northern Territory as well. And this is all because of Tropical Low Zero 5 U, I believe, which is a 25% chance of development now as it tracks off into the Indian Ocean. This tropical low pressure system is going to be enhancing shower and thunderstorm activity through the Northern Territory and into parts of Western Australia. And over the next seven days, we're expecting an abundance of shower and thunderstorm activity, especially specifically into the Kimberley region and parts of the northwestern uh, top end of the Northern Territory, but also into pockets of the Pilbara region south to a line between Carnarvon across to Giles. And this will include uh, Newman, Marble Bar, Telfer, Port Hedland, those sort of locations into interior parts of the Pilbara region. We could be just weak with isolated rainfall accumulations to 125 millimetres into the Kimberley region. So monitor the roads monitoring pages closely because this is the sort of rainfall that is going to begin to cause some flash flooding and washouts. And we could be talking about some significant but we will still to be seeing a shower and thunderstorm activity into the western edge of the Cape York Peninsula as well. Rainfall accumulations between 20 to 50 millimetres with isolated falls to 150 millimetres also a possibility. And that southeasterly flow will also kick up on Monday and Tuesday through parts of the Daintree Rainforest and the Cassidy Coast and up to 50 millimetres is possible for both locations as well. Now where do we go? Tropical cyclones over in Western Australia or tropical cyclones outside of the Coral Sea down towards Vanuatu? I think we should start off with this one considering it is a little bit more of an interesting system but we are beginning to see a full fledged tropical low begin to develop now offshore from the Solomon Islands and you can see enhancements in convection as this low pressure system begins to wrap itself up over some very broad circulation in Awatu over the next couple of days where it may attain category 1 tropical cyclone status just before crossing over and rolling through the islands. This is not expected to be a significant tropical cyclone and as we've talked about in previous forecast updates wind shear is going to be the bane of get itself properly going on Saturday morning it's not expected to strengthen much after about lunchtime on Saturday as it heads down towards Vanuatu. This system will likely arrive in Vanuatu as a Category 1 strength tropical cyclone on Sunday before pulling out of Vanuatu and then heading between Vanuatu and Fiji on Monday and Tuesday and carking it as it interacts properly with a very powerful jet stream. And what that means is wind shear is going to be the bane of this system. We're expecting very high values of wind shear to be coming out of the west and that's going to rip this system apart. Now for Vanuatu, particularly onto the eastern islands, expect some heavy rainfall accumulations between 100 to 300 millimetres with isolated falls to 450 millimetres being a possibility and damaging wind gusts up to 100 kilometers an hour being a possibility, increasing to 125 kilometers an hour as far south as Port Villa. Now there's, there's a cruise ship leaving Port Villa on the 18th that I know a lot of people are interested in. There's no real risk to this cruise ship and the itinerary is unlikely to change, especially with this tropical cyclone forecast being well south of Fiji at this point in time. So it's gonna be business as usual for that cruise ship. I don't see any other way that that uh, kind of falls through. And over and towards Western Australia, double trouble. We are expecting this tropical low 
here, Tropical Low 05 view, I believe it is, to track offshore from Western Australia and begin developing into a tropical low through later this week and into early this weekend, Friday night into Saturday morning or tomorrow night into Saturday morning. This system is a chance to re uh, reach tropical cyclone status well offshore from the West Australian coastline. It's going to be a slow moving system, so initially we'll have a lot of time to make the most of some pretty healthy conditions this storm here. And on Tuesday and Wednesday, we may see a brief weak tropical cyclone develop before this system too begins interacting with the jet stream and then eventually gets ripped apart and dragged off towards the Cocos Keeling Islands. This is, as we discussed yesterday, a fish tropical cyclone in the making. What that means is a very uh, minimal threat to any land areas. It's only expected to be dragging out towards the sea and impacting fish, hence the name. It actually means what it uh, means, which is quite rare in a meteorology sense, I do fight. But this fish storm here heading out offshore from Western Australia, no threat to Western Australia, or even the Cocos Keeling Islands or Christmas Island by extension. And sometimes these systems can produce some pretty significant rainfall accumulations for Indonesia. That is not expected to be the case at this time. Interesting times ahead after about the 21st of December as well. We could be talking about a large low pressure system developing, a large monsoon low pressure system developing across the Northern Territory and parts of Queensland. This could result in a very big uptick in rainfall around Christmas time. And our Christmas weather forecast will be substantially impacted by that if that does come through. We're talking about rainfall across the North and some very warm air developing across the Southwest and potentially some severe thunderstorms across the Southeast. It's a feature that I want to be watching. And again, the development and movement of this massive monsoonal gyro that is now on the forecast is going to have some major ramifications for our Christmas forecast, but as you can see, its future is very, very uncertain. I do hope you've enjoyed this forecast update. If you have, then please you consider leaving a like and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already as well. A massive thank you to our channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now, uh, and I cannot run this show without them, so can, as usual, their uh, support is massively, massively appreciated. But that's going to do it for me today, and I'll catch you on the next storm. Goodbye.